In this video, we're going to go over the MCAT ChemPhys section. The ChemPhys section is the first section on the MCAT, and it is 30% general chemistry, 25% biochemistry, 25% physics, 15% organic chemistry, and 5% biology. The ChemPhys section is a challenging section for many students. Here are a few reasons why. Number one, Look at the broad range of subjects that are tested on the exam. This is difficult for many students to think about, and not just because in college, when you took a final exam, it was on one of these subjects. Now you're doing a section of the exam that's covering all of these subjects at the same time. So instead of thinking about these subjects as being independent subjects, you're going to want to think about how these subjects are related together. In fact, that can be very helpful for you to be able to identify what are the highest yield topics in the ChemPhys section. And those topics are usually the ones that have crossover between the different subjects. A good example is acid-base chemistry. Acid-base chemistry is a general chemistry topic, but it is also covered in organic chemistry and biochemistry. Right? In general chemistry, you learn about the basic concepts of acids and bases, what makes an acid a strong acid or a weak acid. In organic chemistry, you're looking at how the chemical structure of a molecule can make it a stronger acid or a weaker acid. And in biochemistry, you're looking at specific examples looking at the amino acids. All right. Another reason why the ChemPhys section is challenging is because this is really the only section that has calculations, right? You have general chemistry where you're going to have stoichiometry or pH calculations. You also have physics where you're going to do calculations for displacement, velocity, forces, acceleration, and so forth. And calculations can be intimidating for a lot of students because on the MCAT, you won't have a calculator. So the way you want to deal with these calculation questions on the exam is practice. And one of the key skills you want to develop is being able to round numbers, right? In a passage, they're going to give you a number like, oh, I have 287 grams of this substance. And if you want to figure out how many moles it has, you're going to see, oh, it has a molecular weight of about 70.3 grams. And some students would look at those numbers, 287, 70.3, those are some ugly numbers. But if you do some simple rounding, you can recognize, oh, that's about 280 and 70, and 280 out of 70 is about four, right? So that's the type of approximation you want to be able to do on the MCAT ChemPhys section. All right, a third reason why the ChemPhys section is challenging is that there's a bit of a luck aspect when it comes to this section. I'll give you an example with physics. So the MCAT is gonna cover two semesters worth of physics content. The first semester being Newtonian mechanics, which usually covers topics like kinematics, forces, work and energy, fluids, waves, and sometimes springs. The second semester of physics is electricity and magnetism. So you're looking at electrostatics, magnetism, and sometimes also light, mirrors, and lenses. So that's a lot of different topics that I've just mentioned that's tested on the ChemPhys section for physics questions. But if you think about it, the ChemPhys section is only 25% of this section. And the ChemPhys section, as with all the science sections, is 95 minutes long and has 59 questions. A quarter of 59 questions is about 14 to 15. So that means you're gonna see about 14 to 15 physics questions on your exam, and there's no way 14 to 15 questions can cover all of those physics topics that I just mentioned earlier. So that's why there's a luck aspect. So maybe on one exam, you're gonna see a bunch of physics questions on fluids and waves, and on another exam, you're gonna see a bunch of physics questions on electrostatics and circuits. So this is why for some students from one practice test to another practice test, their scores might fluctuate a lot just because of the different topics that are tested. So really the only way you can deal with this is try to cover as much of the content as you can. Again, pick up a set of MCAT books and go through the books cover to cover just to make sure that you're familiar with and are able to understand the vast majority of the topics covered in this section. 
One final reason I want to bring up as to why the ChemPhys section can be challenging is the time pressure. If you look at the four sections of the exam, the ChemPhys section is one of the sections that students have the most problem with for pacing, and the other section is cars. And another reason why this section is challenging is this pacing issue. So running out of time is very common for students, so you have to learn to pace yourself with the ChemPhys section. One helpful way to do this is to set checkpoints for yourself. So you want to set checkpoints such as, for example, after passage eight, I still want to have 20 minutes left. After passage five, I want to have 45 minutes left. If you set these checkpoints, then as you go through the questions, you can pick up early on if you're falling behind and be able to pick up your pace. So that way you don't end up with two passages left and only seven, eight minutes remaining, All right? So pacing can definitely help. And to practice pacing, you definitely want to do some full length practice tests. All right, so that's the MCAT CAMVIS section.